to Valley Homes on TV. I'm Todd Pleasner, your co-host, along with Debbie Indahar Giordano. Got that? I got it. <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> it, it is. Hey, good to see you, Deb. Hi, Todd. Good to see you, we, too. We appreciate folks tuning in to us here on Channel 26, and we're on uh, five days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday evenings, and Saturday and Sunday mornings, so... Um, Hopefully you can catch us and stay up to date with what's going on here in Milpitas. Yes. So, Debbie, you've got a, a guest for us today. I, Would you like to introduce her? I do. Um, we've brought in our planning director from the city of Milpitas, uh, Steve McCarris. Hello, Debbie. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Very good. I'm how are you? Good. I'm Thank glad you. they let you out of the out they of the did. cubicle yes. or whatever it is that you got. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I understand you um, recently gave an interview, a, a talk at the Rotary Club, this Rotary Club. So. Yes, the Rotary Club did invite me over for their afternoon uh, luncheon, and we did talk about planning and a little bit about the background of myself and the department. Well, it's good. I'm glad you can plop down for a few minutes between city business and then off to the planning commission meetings and I know you're a very very busy man so I really appreciate the time sure. um, well let's start uh, the folks don't know you and maybe get to know you tell us a little bit about maybe where you were born and raised and education and um, your background and what brought you to the city of Milpitas sure I won't go too far back but um, I was born in Hartford Connecticut however I was raised in Southern California in Orange County and uh, I schooled at Cal Poly uh, Pomona and Cal State Fullerton. And uh, I... Was that in, yes. in planning or in, urban design? Or well, something? actually in public administration. Okay. And uh, what got me, what kind of brought me toward Milpitas was, um, you know, working over the years, I'd worked in Southern California for a number of years in the private sector, working for private consulting firms, um, and then in the public sector and actually for the University of California, Irvine. Oh, nice. For 10 years. Um, and from there, I came up to the Bay Area, where um, I took a position with the city of Fremont, and that's where I became familiar with the Bay Area and uh, even Milpitas a little bit. Um, however, uh, my my professional journeys brought me over to the Central Coast for the past 10 years. So uh, after being employed with Fremont, I worked for a couple cities on the Central Coast. Um, coming back to Milpitas, what brought me back here was the economy, turning things around, um, having the economy turn things around. As and well Milpitas is exciting. Is very exciting. There's <laughs> quite a bit of quite a bit of uh, development going on. Quite a bit of planning. It's definitely you, a place you know, to Steve, be. your background mirrors a lot of our city manager, who had the consulting, the private industry mm -hmm. background, mm -hmm. coupled with the public sector. Um, yeah. Did you do? Did I hear? Was it some economic development? Uh, work you did in Fremont? I did. Or? Well, my past, uh, my past position was with the city of Soledad, and in that position I was um, involved with uh, administrating the uh, redevelopment agency and economic development. So my role was economic development and community development, dealing with oh, nice. not just attracting business, working with small business and attracting new business to the community, but also working um, with planning, the traditional planning role, um, code enforcement, and building. Oh, great. Well, we're delighted to have you here in Milpitas, and perhaps you can share with the folks tuning in a little bit about what planning and neighborhood services, um, what, what does that do for us here in Milpitas, the citizens? Sure. Well, planning um, planning really kind of organizes and sets a tone and stage for, for the way uh, the city not only looks today, but how it will look tomorrow. So setting the sites uh, based on the city council's vision, for where the city would like to be. So we do, we do deal with economic development um, in terms of businesses coming in and making sure that we can provide the permitting and services they need to not necessarily just stay here, but, but also relocate. So we're also obviously very interested in attracting business. Uh, we look at development in terms of how it looks, uh, where it goes, what types of uses happen where in the city. Those again are all under a general plan that is adopted by the city council. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time on design reviews, so we'll spend time with the way the buildings appear, the materials, color finishes, the landscaping, mm -hmm. the streetscapes. Uh, it's very important to us is the public, what we, re we refer to as the public realm, and that's the area of the sidewalks, the streets, um, everything up to a property line, and then, of course, as properties develop, how those look. So everything fits together to meet the Milpitas vision. Actually, I was looking at some of your statistics here. You had the department had sixteen employees. Now you have nine. That's you must yes, you must be busy. We are very busy. Um, like many cities, uh, with with the demise of redevelopment, 
and the economic downturn. There were obviously uh, a loss of employees and staffing, so that had occurred here just like many other cities. And what we're seeing now is this return of, of demand for development services and how we how we approach that now is, is incrementally. We want to make sure that we have the pr correct staffing levels for uh, providing the service we need to um, accommodate the development that's proposed. So, so now, as a neighborhood services p portion of, um, of what you do, is that separate and distinct from the planning function, or are those integrated? Uh, well, they're somewhat integrated, but they also have very distinct roles. So neighborhood services mm -hmm. deals with, uh, with neighborhood beautification. We acknowledge those individuals and individual properties that have um, have revamped or relandscaped, or which, which encourages the positive aspect of more positive, um, good-looking neighborhoods, um, solid, stable uh, real estate values. Go. With I like us. that so idea. That's something that we really try to spend some time with. We also deal with code enforcement, so we are fairly reactive when we receive calls or, or calls or issues on certain code enforcement violations or something that we'll go take a look, check it out, and work with the developers. We're always seeking compliance. And I think that's an interesting point. There are some neighborhoods that are blighted or some areas, and I think folks want to understand how they can call. They, they have to be proactive and call that in. As We we as a city, or you you don't go out and monitor and have a like a blight control or that patrol means. or something. So um, there has to, is it a, pro, what do you call it, proactive or pro? Proactive. We, what we do is we, we are reactive when it comes to we don't go looking for it. We have plenty of calls, so we deal with, with those that call in. Right. We mm -hmm. are proactive in areas. Um, the example would be our public streets, our main thoroughfares. We want to make sure the main thoroughfares look clean and attractive. So if we see things that are cluttering, littering, or actually even um, some kind of safety issues, mm -hmm. if there are items in the public sidewalk that need to be removed that are left there for whatever reason, then we'll make sure those sidewalks are clear. So, so if folks have a concern, there's a, a property in the neighborhood that you know maybe needs to be mm -hmm. uh, maintained properly, or, or, or graffiti, or, or some other. Removal, so how how would, how would they um, call that in? Sure, they call into city hall. They can actually call in any of the city hall numbers, and they will come in. I know we have some numbers listed here. We have right. a graffiti hotline, Line. which is 408-586-3079. Mm -hmm. and um, the community can just leave a message there. And within a certain amount of time, it's typically within 48, 48 hours, we'll have the graffiti removed, definitely by the end of the week. Okay. Housing rehab loans. I know folks yes. might, must be interested in that. How does the housing rehab loan program well, work? Well, the rehab loan program does work at, based on income, so there's certain income criteria. It is lower income category. So if the person qualifies um, and they may not know, they can definitely check in mm -hmm. again with um, City Hall and our department and anywhere they call it, those numbers will be referred to our department. We do have a housing specialist that will work mm -hmm. with that individual on their property. And, and the reason we like doing these things is not just because of affordability issues, mm -hmm. but also, again, it's back to keeping the neighborhoods nice, pristine, clean. So if somebody is in need of some rehab assistance, particularly on the outside, right. where you might have broken window or faded paint or chipping paint, those kinds of things, we can work with them on some very advantageous rates or you okay. know, rate mm -hmm. of returns. For them. Right. Yeah. Well, I know some of the nonprofit work I've done with Rebuilding Together, we've worked with neighborhood services to help bring in folks to mm -hmm. repair uh, mm -hmm. and do some maintenance on homes for, for folks here in Milpitas who may not be able to afford that. Right. So. All right. Well, um, that covers a lot of the existing neighborhoods. Let's talk about the new stuff that's going on. That's the exciting mm -hmm. element of this city. I, I think the, the city is in a transitional stage and it, it's rebirthed into there's so many dwelling units, housing units that are going into the down, downtown transit area mm -hmm. quarter. Can you explain how that growth is happening? I, you walked into this job. I believe those were already in the blueprint, already yes. in the general plan. Um, what's, what's going on? Where are we seeing these five, six, seven-story buildings, sure. and what's happening there? Sure. What's going on and what's so interesting about Milpitas, what's so attractive to working in, in planning in Milpitas and building, is that... Uh, the vision of Milpitas is to set a certain number of density, meaning a certain number of household units that will be constructed um, now and into the future in, in particular areas of the city. And much of it is focused in the transit area. The transit area is the area centered around the future BART station, which is now, those plans are now solidifying. They're actually under construction. And the idea is to place... Uh, we, we are seeing construction yes, going on now. Quite a bit right. of construction, and that is... Um, near the Great Mall, which also benefits the Great Mall economically as you place um, more population in that area. It also takes care of an, a, sort of a, uh, an idle um, business area, which was a former you know, industrial areas that have now um, worked through their 
their life expectancy as far as those buildings go. And so those are being replaced with this higher density development. Now, when we talk about residential, we really are talking about higher stories, five, six, seven story buildings, so most, many of them. Some Condos, are, some they're are not single four. family homes. Condos, townhouses, apartments. Many mm -hmm. are rental, some are for sale. Okay. Mm -hmm. And would you see a, a change in, in the, the balance or the, the proportion of jobs to homes uh, here in Milpitas as a result of that development? That's a good question. Well, that is, that is a good question. We, do, we, we did analyze, the city did analyze mm -hmm. that when they prepared the planning area for, for mm -hmm. the BART Bart station and the transportation areas there. So, yes, there is a displacement. However, the job creation, because it's not just residential units, it's mm -hmm. also commercial okay. properties. So commercial properties are quite often mixed use, meaning they're actually in the same building, which is also an exciting and, and different aspect for Milpita, mm -hmm. something new up and coming. So we will see job growth in, in that area. Okay, terrific. Mm -hmm. So how many new units are planned? Did well, in the transit area, there's actually about 7,100 units planned. And of that, we've entitled, meaning we've taken projects through the Planning Commission City Council level, not necessarily yet in building permit, mm -hmm. of over, a little over half that number. Wow. Wow. That's, wow. That's, yeah. <laughs> so we've got a lot more building yet so to come, it looks like. Yes, and there's been a very, very positive response to mm -hmm. that plan. Terrific. So now are there plans or uh, propose them for those other units, or are those just um, what the, the planning department envisions being able, to, in terms of capacity to build well, in the future? Well, the capacity is the 7,100. The, 7, okay. the, yeah. the actual plans that have gone through, at least so we know what they look like and where they go and how mm -hmm. they work, that's about half of that has, has occurred with another half you know, possibly to happen over the next, let's say, five years or so. Sure. Well, Steve, you got plunked into this job about, what, six, eight months ago? Eight months Ago, eight yes. months ago, um, with this whole array of things going on, this uh, quagmire of yes. development and general plan. What do you see for the city for the next, say, three to five years now? What, what's on the horizon? Well, I would see some of what we're seeing now. We see um, some construction coming out of the ground, and I suspect we'll see uh, three, four, five more buildings of that caliber coming up, and we're talking about the larger buildings. We're also going to see the townhouses, the, the, the units, residential units that are about three, three to four story units. Mm -hmm. You'll see some single family. The single family that you do see are the smaller lots, but tall, the three story mm -hmm. buildings. Um, in commercial, you'll see mixed use, as I mentioned. So it's particularly in the transit area, you're going to see the ground floor on some of these larger buildings be commercial. And that's where you see when you go to other cities that are have urban components to them or are urban, um, you'll see the Starbucks and, mm -hmm. and those like types of... Like a Santana of, Row? Know, or like or similar to a Santana Row. Some areas more so than others. Some mm -hmm. will actually be neighborhood serving. In the transit area, we do have an area set aside mm -hmm. for grocery, so we have enough square footage, commercial square footage, to accommodate a smaller grocery store that will be able to serve not just the new residents, but the existing folks in that part of wow. our town. Terrific. So we've been talking about three to five stories primarily in terms and the density piece of that. Yes. Um, is there a vision or an opportunity for higher rise buildings in Milpitas, or are there limits on that? There is. Well, there's there's some limits and there's some not. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have some projects that are entitled that are higher than that. Mm -hmm. I'm really giving you uh, the broad brush of what we're seeing the market right. demand meet, mm -hmm. and the market demand seems to be in that area. We do have entitlements for buildings that are taller than that, mm -hmm. yet whether they come in for building permit and actually fulfill mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, vision or not, that will be up to the private sector to right. determine. Mm -hmm. So. Um, what, what other challenges do you have coming? Well, the way? challenges are always um, ever-changing as a community and the economic develop or the economics change mm -hmm. in the community and in, in the state and the nation as a whole. So as we see this economic recovery, we see more of this demand. We have demand on residential. As the residential moves in, then we have demand for commercial, which, which typically follows the residential. So we'll see more of that. And I imagine yes. traffic is going to become an issue. Traffic is so. an issue and always needs to be managed. And Milpitas, of course, we have these highways that run through our community. Yes. One is a state highway, which state is highway Connecting and 880. And we have Montague that is, that is a county connect, facility. Mm -hmm. So we work with those agencies. Uh, the higher you go, in other words, state, the, the, the less uh, response you get for improvements that are, of course, needed. Right. The county level, I know Montague is adding a lane, and so we're working with them as development occurs to be sure that all happens orderly um, as far as moving traffic through. The, the, through the city, that's important to those agencies as well as the city to make sure we can move people where they need to be. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the bright side of that is the numbers that run through, the higher those numbers are, mm -hmm. the more um, successful the businesses are along those corridors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So certainly when we talk about Montague it's and It's always cause and effect of everything. Isn't it, it's, it's fantastic. Some, some folks think, well, there's a lot of traffic that's true, but also the benefit is we'll have more services, more commercial development. Of course, that benefits the city as a whole. Terrific. Well, I know that you know, folks that, that live and work here in Milpitas love the community. And what if they want to have an opportunity for some input into the process? How, how do you incorporate that? Um, input into the process, certainly we have the city of Milpitas is, is almost unique in the terms of how many commissions we have. So we have a number of commissions in terms of development, at least in our department, we actually staff about five different commissions. The ones that might be uh, more interesting to some folks would be we have an economic development commission, so they deal with um, commercial retaining existing business and bringing in new business. Uh, we, have, we have a bicycle and pedestrian committee or commission that um, deals with obviously bicycles and, mm -hmm. and sidewalks right. mm -hmm. and, and, and people walking. Um, we have our planning commission, of course, which is a, a key commission, and that deals with many of the development projects that we've been talking about today, mm -hmm. as well as, of course, we have And those are open public those meetings? Are all Folks of these can right. come open down public. to those meetings? And, mm -hmm. and we do have our city council. Mm -hmm. So our city council meets every other week. We have our, our planning commission that meets every other week. We have commissions that meet once a month. You could take any given week and be able to participate in this process. And then speaking of the open governance, now PETAS goes above and beyond with its open governance in terms of allowing the public to speak or comment on mm -hmm. any items, not just advertised public hearing items, which the law requires, but, right. but any, any item. items that that's, somebody that's a good would like to speak to. Well, yes. Steve, you, you seem like you have a real good handle <laughs> on the city for eight months. I've lived yes. here my whole life, and I can't even be There's so much going on, it the way this, you this, can. This is what we do. So you <laughs> obviously <laughs> got thrown into the job, and you took yes. the bull by the horns. Yes. I want to thank you. Todd and I both yes. want to thank you for being sure. our guest on Valley Homes on TV. So we'd like to give you a T-shirt with our Valley Homes on TV logo. Terrific. Thank and you. And thank you very, very much. Mm -hmm. um, uh, welcome to the city, and we look forward to a long-term relationship with you. Thank and you, and thank as you do for I. you do. You always made sure I brushed my teeth. You told me that smart was cool. You always told me to dream big. To all of those parents who took the time to make raising their children their most important job, we'd like to say thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thanks, Mom and Dad. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Giordano and Todd Flesner with Guarantee Mortgage. I got that right? You got it right. That's good. <laughs> yeah. How are you enjoying that new company? Uh, terrific. Um, you know, it's very, very similar to, uh, you know, what I've always done, which has been able to broker loans, be able to match people up with the right lender for their circumstance. So it provides me that opportunity really to, to help folks out and not be tied to a particular that's nice. Branch of or, or a particular lender. Great. I know so, the folks I boot over to you, they yeah. really enjoy working with you. So. Well, um, yeah, I enjoy working with folks and helping them find out what their options are. So nice. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Well, we've, um, i got to share with you, but we're doing mm -hmm. our, um, our, our wrap up, uh, our monthly wrap up. Right. This is the end of July, and I think maybe we missed June, but um, on June 14th, San Jose Mercury headlines home prices keep rising. I mean, that has got to be the talk of the century right now. In fact, I think it was a few days ago, I read where prices have risen over 30 percent. That's about the what I've been hearing as valley? well, 25 to 30 percent here in the valley. And, um, you know, for, for folks who may have purchased when values were down, it looks like, you know, those values are recovered. But do we see that this mm -hmm. coming? You know, 
I, I think you and I saw a recovery on the horizon, but I don't know if we saw the rapid increase that we've seen here. It's been about what this last year. This last year has been tremendous. It yeah. has been. Yeah. Um, I had an open house on Saturday, uh, at, at, priced at 538, and there were about 40 different groups that came through that, and we've got multiple offers, all cash buyer above the asking price. So it just seems like the, um, the momentum is still there for prices. I, I guess what I want to say is it's, it's still a good time for a buyer to come in with the good interest rates? That's correct. Mm -hmm. what, where we are today with interest rates? Well, we, we've seen interest rates actually go up a little bit in the last couple of months, but we're still at very, very affordable rates. We're, we're in the low to mid fours for conforming loans, so four and three eighths, four and a half percent, because it fluctuates a little bit on a daily basis. Um, the jumbo conformings are in the higher fours. But those historically are very, very good rates. Um, and, you know, we, we couldn't stay in the threes forever. We knew that that wasn't going to be the case. Um, but, you know, when folks take a look at, at their budgets and, and what that enables them to purchase, it still helps keep property here in, in the valley, um, you know, affordable or more affordable than it has been historically. And I think part of the pressure on the home pricing, it obviously, is demand. So many pent up demand with buyers, mm -hmm. lower lower inventories, but the job job growth here is so strong that I, I it's just really been a, a tremendous factor in home prices. Absolutely, and you know, the job numbers um, you know we're seeing here locally, but also on a national basis, are part of what has contributed to the increase in interest rates because um, it, it pretends a, a recovery in the economy um, and for other investments out there that the dollar is looking for, that means that there's a higher rate of return. And therefore, those investing in mortgages are going to seek a higher rate of return So, as well. Todd, do you see um, pr um, interest rates continuing to stabilize like this in the low fours, maybe throughout the year, or what do you predict? Well, you know, it's, it's difficult to say exactly what's going to happen in the future. Um, you know, I, I think that we're going to stay in a relatively stable sort of environment, at least for the, the shorter term here. Um, one of the things that, that caused the spike in rates as well was the Federal Reserve Board and some of their notes here from the most recent meeting talking about the unwinding of the quantitative easing of their mortgage purchase program. Now, they haven't indicated exactly when that's going to be, but they've indicated that you know, they're going to have to taper off of that at some point in time. Um, and so, you know, the market took that signal and said, well, okay, <laughs> you know, the demand piece of the, the equation okay. is going to change. Um, so I, I think part of it is going to be really dependent upon, um, you know, Fed action in the future. The Fed has indicated they're going to keep prime rate um, and the Fed funds rate low, you know, throughout 2014. So that piece of the, the puzzle I think is going to you know, be relatively stable. But there are two key indicators that the Fed's looking at. They're looking at inflation. Their target inflation rate is 2%. We've been about in the ones. So uh, up until the time we see inflation heat up to get to 2% or more, that'll keep their interest rate policy low. The other is unemployment. And the key number there is 6.5%. Um, when we see an employment rate come down to 6.5%, again, the Fed will start looking real seriously at their interest rate policy. Nice, nice, interesting. Mm -hmm. that, that is interesting. Would you like to see what's going on with home prices? I'd love to. That mm -hmm. has that, that got to be really exciting, particularly for a homeowner here in Milpitas. Uh, let, let me look at May 2012. What we had for uh, an average price here in Milpitas was 606000 and a median price was 525000 that has shifted in a year to May of 2013 statistics of a average price of 696,000 and a median price of 739,000. Wow, incredible! That, that is amazing, huh? You've still got that rental, right? That you <laughs> I, kept. I, I, I do. Good <laughs> for you. Keep it. Um, the condos and townhomes. It, I always thought that this was fascinating because right now we're building so many of the new condo and townhome product. You know, down in the transit area where BART's coming in and the, right. where the Great Mall is. And so I always thought, well, that's going to either depress the mm -hmm. existing condo or saturation prices. saturation of the market. Saturation of the market. It hasn't done it. Mm. Uh, the demand for, um, you know, a condo and townhome, because it's affordable for an entry-level product, is still unbelievable. May 2012, average price was 314000 and median price was 335000 
and that shifted to May 2013. Won't believe this. We're up to four hundred ninety-seven thousand. My goodness. I know for an average price condo and four ninety-one for a medium price. So, um, you know, I, I, we're not going to roll backwards, and I, I think the market is promising. I think what I'm hearing from a lot of buyers, they're kind of exhausted with the with the search. You know, mm -hmm. they've been beat up with multiple right. offers, and a few have pulled back. But again, with limited inventory. Um, it, it's it, these prices are still going to remain stagnant the way they are now, and possibly you know maybe another three five percent increase here by the end of the year. So well, that's what I see. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I think you know again with interest rates, affordability is still there, and I think I don't think that the increase in rates have priced that many people out of the no, market. No, no, not that I'm seeing. Yeah. And I know the folks I'm working with who've got pre-approvals are still active and they're still looking. And it's just that the competition right now to be able to get into a property is, is pretty significant. So, um, you know, it's healthy for sellers as well. Very healthy. Well, um, let's close the wrap-up. Let's see, we had two shows this month. We, we've got Steve McCarris here with the City of Milpitas Planning Department. And then we interviewed... Uh, it was Madeline was with Madeline Intero. with Intero Real Estate. So that was July's show. And then we've got in August, we have uh, Crown Plaza that's booked, that's going to be showcasing their new hotel expansion here in Milpitas. So. Oh, terrific. That'll be wonderful. Look forward to that. Yeah, so and if you folks want to uh, send us an email and have a question or a comment on the show, we can certainly address that. And you can send that to me at Giordano, G I O R. D A N O D J at AOL dot com. And Todd, where can folks reach you for T Flesner at GM West, like Great Mortgage, the direction West dot com. Great. Thank you folks for watching Valley Homes on TV and look forward to seeing you again. Okay.